So in the lesson today, we're going to talk about circle similarity. <clears throat> um, so our objective is uh, that you can determine if two circles are similar and what their similarity ratio is. So first of all, <clears throat> um, hopefully you guys remember that radius um, from yesterday is from the center of the circle to the circle. Okay, so this is our radius, and it takes two radius to, to make a diameter. So when we do our diameter, it's going to be the diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. So all we're going to do to get our diam diameter here is multiply 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, and 2 times 5. Okay, so that's how we got our diameter. Now, circumference is the distance around the outside of a circle. Okay, and when we find the circumference, we're going to, circumference is equal to the diameter times pi, or the circumference is equal to 2 times radius times pi. Well, obviously, diameter is 2 times the radius, okay? So, we're just going to take our diameter there, we're going to multiply it times pi, and pi is approximately... 3.14, but you all should have pi on your calculator, so I need you to find that right now. Yeah, 83 or 84, it's above the caret symbol, so you're going to go second and then the caret symbol, that's where pi is. And it's, again, it's going to give you 3.14 and a whole bunch of other numbers, but um, we're going to multiply that times, so we're going to do here, we're going to do 4 times pi, okay, in our calculator, and when we do that, we get 12.57. Okay, and we're going to continue. Again, we're going to do 6 times pi, right? 6 times pi here, and that's going to be equal to 18.85. We're going to round um, this digit here based on the third number, right? Okay, and then 8 times pi is going to be equal to 25.13. Again, looking at the third digit, determine what is the second digit. And 10 times pi is 31. So this is, sorry, this is going to be our 10 times pi, 10 times pi, and that's going to be equal to um, 31.42. Now, this next thing is we're going to find out what is the ratio of the radius over the circumference, okay? So we have our radius um, over here. This is our radius, right? Uh, let's just do that in red. Yeah, here's our radius, and then we're going to look at our circumference, and our circumference was our blue, right? Right here? This, okay? So we're going to go 1 over 6.28 and find out what that ratio is. And we're just going to do two, three decimal places, so it's 0 0.159, okay? We're going to keep doing that, so we're going to go 2 over are 12.57. Well, guess what that is? That's also 0 0.159. And then we're going to keep going down. 6 divided by 18.85. That's also 0 0.159. So, and we're going to talk about what we see after we're done. 8 divided by 25.13. That's also equal to 0 0.159. And then 10 divided by 31.42. That's also 0 0.159, okay? So what we can see is that the ratio of the radius over the circumference stays the same, no matter what the value of the radius is. Next, we're going to talk about um, the circumference divided by the diameter, okay? So here again, we've got our circumference here in the second column, and our diameter here. Okay, so now we're going to do our 6.28, and we're going to divide that by 2. And when we do that, we get 3.14. Well, guess what? That is what pi rounds to, right? Again, we're rounding to the set, to two decimal places, okay? Um, so let's keep going, and we're going to keep doing this. Again, we're going to divide our 12.58, or 57, sorry, by are 4, and we're once again going to get 3.14. Keep going. 18.85. Um, we're going to divide that by 6. We get 3.14 again. See the pattern? Hopefully you guys are beginning to see the pattern. 25.13 divided by 8. 
Once again, 3.14. Last one, 31.42 divided by 10 is equal to 3.14. Okay? So once again, you should see that the ratio of the circumference to the diameter is again the same. Okay? Now it says make a prediction about the ratio of the circle's diameter and circumference. Diameter and circumference. So um, if, if based on what we just saw on the previous side, if this gave us the same ratio, dividing the circumference by the diameter, what do you think is going to happen when we divide the diameter by the circumference? Right, we're going to get the same ratio again. So if we divide our diameter by our circumference, we're going to get, let's just do it with one value, 2 over 6.28, right? That's going to be equal to 0 0.318. And again, if we did this for all of them, so if we did our diameter um, was 1 over 3.14, right? That would also equal 0 0.318, okay? So what do we see? We see that they all, that they have the same uh, ratio, right? Same ratio. For everyone. Okay? Alright, the next one says, which statement is true for all, for any two circles? The ratio of the areas, okay, so first of all, let's talk about what area is. The area of a circle is pi r squared. The circumference is equal to the diameter times pi or, and actually I'll make that a little d so it's easier to see, okay, diameter times or 2 times a radius times pi, right? Okay, so what do you see different here? Okay, do you notice that you have an r squared in the area, but you only have an r in um, the circumference? Well, obviously, um, that's going to mess up things, right? So notice that we have area, 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 right? So the only way that we could get a ratio that's the same is if we have something that's squared. Well, obviously the radius here is not squared, right? Because that's just a, so this is a squared, this is a squared, this is a squared, okay? So this is not going to work. Um, diameter is not going to work because diameter is what? Diameter is equal to 2 times the radius, right? So that we don't have a squared there, right? So that's not going to work. And circumference is 2 times r times pi, right? So again, it's not squared. So the ratio of the circumferences, however, to the ratio of the radii, those are always going to be true, right? Okay. So again, um, this is why B is our answer, okay? So then down here, all circles are similar because you can perform a similarity transformation to map one circle onto the, any other circle. What series of transformations map circle A to circle B? Well, the first thing I want to look at is the, is the radius, okay? So the radius of circle A is 2. The radius of circle B is 3. Okay, so if you remember, it's saying map circle A to circle B. So we're always going to take the radius of B and put it over the radius of A, okay? So that's what we're always going to do. So we're going to take it 3 over 2, and that's equal to 1.5. So that's a dilation, right, by a scale factor of 1.5, okay? Then we notice something else happened here, right? So look at where our center is here and where our center is there, okay? So to get from the center of A to the center of B, we're going to have to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, right? And then what? One, two, down. So this particular circle has both a dilation and a translation, doesn't it? Does everybody see that? Okay. All right, so the next one says, what series of transformations map circle A onto circle B? Okay. So again, remember, if it's starting with A and B, so we're going to talk about B over A. Okay, so what is the radius of B? It's equal to R subscript 1, and the radius of A is R subscript 2, okay? So notice that's going to be our dilation, okay? Then what else do you notice? Looks to me like it moves to the right and down, okay? So it moves to the right and down. Now, we don't know how much because we don't have a grid in the background, but we do know that, okay? So it has both a dilation and a translation, okay? Okay? 
And we could say that this is a translation, guys. So you might want to write that on your paper. Okay? All right, so this next one is, are these are you tries. And these are things that we um, have talked about in the lesson today. And so <clears throat> I'd like you guys to go ahead and try number one here. And, um, and then uh, we'll go over it in just a second. So pause the video. Go ahead and take a minute or so and look at it and see if you can figure out what's going on. And then we'll talk about it. Okay, so if circle A has a center of H negative 3 and circle B has a circle, uh, has a center of H2, so notice that we went from H negative 3 to H2, okay? So what do you notice happened here? Did the H's change? Mm -mm. H's didn't change, did they? So we know it didn't go left or right at all. So we can scratch through that, scratch through that, right? However... If we started at negative 3, remember this is our y value here. So if we start at negative 3 down here, 1, 2, 3, and we go up to 1, 2, how far did we move? You got it. So once again, we're going to take our ending to, we're going to subtract from it our negative 3. That's how we're going to get how much we moved. Where did we end? Where did we begin? Okay. So we're going to take where we ended, and we're going to subtract from it where we began. So that's actually going to be 2 plus 3, right? So we went 5 up, didn't we? We did. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep, 5. So we went 5 up. Okay, so that's not 5 down, right? Then let's talk about our scale factor, okay? So it says um, if circle A has a center of H, negative 3, and a radius of R. So again, we started with our R, so that's going to go on the bottom, and then uh, circle B has a radius of 3. Isn't it going to be 3 over R? It is. Okay, so remember, we're always going to put our end over our beginning. Okay? So, and we did have that ratio right there. Do you see it? So that's why C is, gives us both parts. Why C is the answer. Okay? All right, then, um, what scale factor should be applied to circle A to show that it's similar to circle B? So once again, it's saying A to B. So we're going to take our B, and we're going to put it over our A, aren't we? Okay. So what is that? Go ahead and do that. You got it. It's going to be big R over little r, right? That's going to be our scale factor. Okay, so on this next part, I'd like you guys to, again, uh, pause the video and um, go do this, and then come back, turn the video back on, and, and check your answer. So it says, label the following parts on the circle below, radius, diameter, chord, secant, tangent, okay? So pause the video here, come back to me when you're done. Okay, so our first one is a uh, radius, and uh, this is our radius right here, okay? We have two other radii, but um, they also make a diameter, so I'm not going to do those. Then I have a diameter. This is my diameter, isn't it? Two radii added together that go through the center of the circle, so this is a chord that goes to the center of the circle, okay? Um, then next we have a chord, right? So then we have a chord, and this is our chord here. Remember, a chord and points are on the circle. Now, diameter is also a chord, um, but in this case, I wanted something that was not our diameter because we already labeled the diameter. Then we have a secant. Now, a secant is a line that intersects the circle at two points. So this is our secant. It's a line. How do I know that? It has arrows at the end of it. Y'all see it right here? So that's what differentiates a secant from a chord, okay? Then we have a tangent, and our tangent is going to be where a line that intersects a circle at one point. So this down here is our tangent, okay? Very important that you guys understand what each of these are and differentiate the two. And the, the most confusing usually for people to differentiate are the secant and the tangent or a secant and a chord, okay? Um, so both of those are somewhat difficult to differentiate sometimes. So a secant is a line, a chord is a segment. Segment has endpoints on the circle, okay? 